This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. And good afternoon, 204 the time. Little housekeeping uh, this morning. Uh, yesterday, I, I went off on several rants. As a matter of fact, the whole three hours was a rant, I think. Um, and it was about uh, putting God in prayer back in schools. If you want to solve all this, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods can do whatever they want. doesn't matter to me. Um, I don't know how many uh, rifles they sell anyway, but uh, uh, they they can do whatever they want. That's not going to stop school shootings. Um, you know, if you, if you want to stop this, you're going to have to put value for human life back in the mix. And that requires valuing valuing human life, which we don't much anymore. So um, I went off on a rant yesterday about putting God and prayer back in schools. I mean, if we can uh, vacate a school classroom, um, put down uh, rugs so Muslim students can pray, I can sure talk about God or prayer or anything else I want to talk about. And I think the argument can be made for that. And, you know, the thing that set me off yesterday, I suppose, was I went on change.org. You know, it's one of these websites. Um, And about God and prayer in school, they got 49 responses. 49. Um, And then they started, uh, they did a poll question about, uh, you know, banning guns and doing this and uh, banning the streaming of NRA TV from Amazon. They got thousands upon thousands of responses. So I figured, hey, what have I got to lose at this stage of my life, right? Now, I've got a microphone three hours a day, and I suppose if I do or say something that, uh, you know, gets everybody knows uh, knows out of joint management wise. They'll either let me know or take the microphone away. And thus far, they've been nothing but supportive. Uh, the uh, talk radio is opinion driven. I'm not a news guy. Please don't uh, confuse what I do with WBAP news. No, I try to give you uh, the news of the day factually, and I give you opinion. Well, my opinion is if you want to stop school shootings, if you want to stop uh, the blatant disrespect we have for one another, if you want to stop all this violence, then you put God and prayer back in schools. Now, can you do that immediately? No, but you can You can sure get the, the train rolling. So that's what I've decided to do, to make that argument. And to show the rest of America, no, there's more than 49 people that are in interested and invested in this. So I'm going to go to David. Now, David, you put this up on the WBAP Facebook. I don't have a Facebook page myself. Okay. It's just too much to deal with. Um, but uh, if you go to w- Facebook, WBAP, and then scroll down a ways, you will see uh, my picture the second time. And it says Rick Roberts weekday afternoon blah blah blah, and then it uh, it says Rick Roberts hashtag God and prayer back in schools, and there's a couple links there. If you click on the second one, it gives you you know about a, I don't know five minutes of the show yesterday. So I I did that for one reason. I I'm going to continue this, continue with your likes, your shares, your comments, and then I'm going to expose it nationally. So, you know, don't tell me, well, only 49 people care about this. That's not true. That's not true at all. You know, we're heard coast to coast broadcasting out of Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, people listen to us all over the country. Now, more than 49 in the first 60 seconds, I think, of doing this. That's correct. So now the number of people contacted are the people that went there, shared it, Somebody else shared it. Somebody else shared it. 
Um, so how many people uh, have we reached thus far? Okay, as of 208 this afternoon, 42,534. Okay, so 42,000 people uh, have um, have been reached on this uh, this Facebook That's post. correct. Okay. Uh, and again, if you want to go there and, um, you know, you can do it throughout the course of the show. I'm not going to do the whole three hour show on it, but I am going to do it every day, um, for a little while until, uh, I feel it's ready. And then I'm going to, I'm going to expose it nationally. Um, you know, X number of people thought it important enough, uh, to take a few minutes out of their day to post a comment, to share, to whatever. So they go to Facebook WBAP. That's correct. And then um, uh, look for my second picture. It's it's down there a ways. You got to scroll down. Right. And uh, when you see it, you'll see uh, Rick Roberts hashtag God and Prayer back in schools. Uh, if you want to listen to the show, click on that second link there, and that's sort of uh, myself and Grant Stinchfield from NRA are talking, and I kind of tell you why I started doing this. Um, and it's uh, how many how many comments do we have on this thing right now it's 4151 reactions comments and shares so the reaction is they love it they hit they're angry about it or they like it okay so we've got so 4137 reaction that's comments and shares and so on um out of out of 42,000 people uh, reached uh, i guess this is less than 24 hours um, how many people didn't like what I had to say? So far, we have one angry, and 40 people hid the post, and 13 hid the post from another source when someone shared it. Yeah. So only 13 people yeah. hid that post. So 53. Right. So that's almost the number of... Uh, 53 out of 42,000? Yeah. 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 So don't tell me that uh, the American people... Um, are against God and prayer back in schools. Um, if Muslims can, you know, do their thing, I ought to be able to do my thing. The country was founded um, on Christian principles out of the Bible, um, not anybody else's. So I shouldn't, well, I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to make anybody mad. Let me turn the other cheek. I'm through turning cheeks, by the way, just in case anybody asks. Yeah. Um, I believe in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, but I'm through turning cheeks. I, I got no more cheeks to turn. Um, now, there's something else you're going to do uh, on Twitter, right? Yes, sir. I <clears throat> I had this. Excuse me. I have my Twitter account, and what we're going to do, we're going to post something later on today, and I will use the hashtag God in Prayer. And if you go onto Twitter, it'll be the WBAP 24/7 News. I will post it here shortly. Okay. And if you want to go ahead and uh, Retweet that, and we'll see how many we can get over there. All right. Well, it works for Trump. Uh, we'll see. Uh, also, tomorrow, you you asked me to do something today when I came in. That's correct. Um, but we're going to do it tomorrow. Now, okay. well, what's that all about? Okay. So a lot of the other WBAP hosts, we do a Facebook Live. What uh -huh. we'll do is we'll do a Facebook Live on one segment every day. So I think it would be best if we do the first segment. Mm -hmm. Or you'll you'll go on Facebook Live, and then after you're done, after we go to break, you'll tell everybody, "Hey, come, tune into the radio, st tune into the station. Go ahead, get here. We have more to say." Go and ahead, get here. Yeah, turn on, turn on radio. Oh, okay, so I, I we'll be on Facebook Live then tomorrow. Yes, sir. That's at, correct. At what time? Two o three. Two o three. All right. Um, so uh, we'll do the Facebook Live tomorrow. Uh, they got a little tripod set up in here, and we'll do all that for you. Uh, all right, 12 minutes after the hour, 2.12 the time. Let me step aside very quickly. Check that afternoon drive, which is an absolute nightmare if you're anywhere near 35. And once again, it's because 18-wheelers uh, get sideways. Forgive me. It sounds like I'm hammering these guys every day, uh, but every day there's some problem. And when one of these 18-wheelers gets sideways, it shuts everything down. All right. Um, did I say that out loud? I did, didn't I? All right. Your call straight ahead. All right. Uh, 18 minutes after the hour. Got a trucker just call up. Well, why don't you talk about something you know about? Okay. Easy. Easy. All right. I know about driving. I've driven all over this country a lot more than I care to admit. You know, this happened in the late 90s uh, in Dallas. I was at another station. 
and I drove in way, way north to uh, the station, which was in the ballpark at the time. And every day, I mean every day, just as sure as the sun was coming up, some 18-wheeler gets squirrely, shut down the whole interstate. You know, and I said, well, you know, during rush hour, can't you guys stay in at least two lanes? I mean, today, for instance, you know, before you hit that 10-mile traffic jam, because uh, here we go again, fuel spill. If I had a nickel for every time I heard fuel spill during the week on the traffic report, I'd be independently wealthy. Um, same thing, 18 wheelers, four lane highway, three abreast. Uh, and it was like, okay, it's raining. So you realize you're kicking up water. If anybody passes you, they're going to be driving blind for 15 or 20 seconds. Uh, Why can't from, I don't know, uh, at least certain times a day, why can't you keep these guys at least in half the lanes you know, I know some guy called up here and told me about, well, you got to get a running start, and I get all that. But we're talking about in-town driving. All right. Okay, I'm going to get off that. I don't want to talk about it. There's nothing that can be done about it. Um, 18-wheelers out there, for the most part, are driven by pretty responsible people. But the guys that aren't, man, they screw it up for everybody. All right, let's go to Frank in Cedar Hill. Frank, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Frank? Hi, Rick. Listen, I like your show. I love you. Uh, I, I agree with almost everything you say, but you need, now, listen to me. You need to get off that 18-wheeler driver stuff. Now, let me explain a couple things. All right. One, there's there's bad truck drivers out there. Okay, I can't, I, well, well, Frank, I can't understand you. What are you saying? Okay. Um, we need to slow down on, on the bashing the truck drivers. Uh, Slow down on bashing. I've only mentioned it twice. Well, actually, you mentioned it three times, and, and today makes it just now makes four. Okay, well, but, four times. Okay, not, not, you got to follow me here. Uh, you know, sometimes when these guys get an accident, you just make that one up on thirty-five up there, Jack Knight's trailer. Uh, most of the time, Rick, it's somebody else's fault, believe it or not. Well, look, I, I agree four-wheelers I, are a pain what? in the butt to drive with, but stay off their bumper at 60 miles an hour and you won't jackknife. I, I totally agree. None of us know what happened up there. I, I drive approximately three to 500 miles in this Metroplex five, six days a week. I see it all. I see bad drivers, good drivers, and... Um, uh, what I'm saying is, is people, when a truck driver is up there, pay attention to what he's doing. You know, there's only certain things we can do on the road. I'm not making up any excuses. Like I said, I've I, I ran into the same, same driver, correct? The, 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 well, uh, you he, know, you know that I, four wheel drive, four wheel drivers are ridiculously bad. You know that, right? Absolutely. So don't ride their bumper at 60 miles an hour because they'll do anything. They're putting on makeup, talking yeah. on the cell phone, texting, whatever they're doing. You know, when a four-wheeler gets sideways, you push it off to the side and traffic keeps going. When one of you guys gets sideways, it shuts down the whole interstate. I don't tailgate. I've been tailgated by truck drivers, but... Like I say, I, the first thing I told you was there's good ones and there's bad ones. There's safe ones and there's, uh, I, I don't understand these guys that, that ride right on your bumper with an 18 wheeler carrying 80,000 pounds. Exactly. Yeah. And they pissed me off too, Rick. And, uh, but what I'm, what I'm saying is, is yeah. what I'm saying, there's probably more bad four wheelers than 18 wheelers, but that's because there's more of them. If you know they, they don't drive well, don't okay. ride their bumper. And again, if they get sideways, you push them off. People keep going. If one of you guys get sideways, it shuts down everything. All right, let, let me let me lay out one more thing for you. All right, and and this is this is for the listeners. If you would not believe how many people in a four wheeler will challenge you, thank you. they challenge you, and sometimes we're pushing the corner and there's nothing to do. I, I'm not kidding. They're the ones that are going to die, not the truck driver. Uh, I agree. I agree and with what you. They, what, what, what the four wheelers need to do is back off. And, and even if the guy is is doing something wrong, the truck driver is doing something, leave him alone because 
he's not going to get hurt. It's usually going to be the boy. Okay, let, let me ask you one thing, and we're going to wrap this yeah. up because I don't want to do yeah. uh, truck talk all hour. Uh, <laughs> I got you. But when it's raining, even when it's not raining, but especially when it's raining, you got, it doesn't matter if you got flaps or not, you still kick up a, a ton of uh, water when uh, people that are trying to pass you uh, are basically driving blind for about 10 seconds because the water right. that's thrown up. D- does it make any sense to you as a truck driver? You got four lanes and you got 18 wheelers and three of them running abreast. Does that make sense? I, I, I heard you say that the other day and I heard you say it earlier today. No, not at all. Um, that's actually illegal. That's actually called convoy. And, and you're not supposed to do that. Um, and, and I heard another guy saying something, well, it takes a while to build up your speed. And that's true, too. And you never know what's really going on. Did you know, Rick, that most of the major highways in this town, truck drivers cannot ride in the left-hand lane? Did you, are you, are you aware uh, of that? I, I don't know. They seem to be driving wherever they want. Uh, but, well, uh, I mean, it, to, look, I'm not here to bash I, truck drivers. I mean, I, I used I to. Not, Rick, I, I listen to you quite a bit. I, You're a pretty good guy. First thing I told you that I love you and I listen to you. So, it just uh, it seems to me, especially yeah. in inclement weather, when you know the four wheelers can't see when they go around you, um, you know, take half the lanes, uh, take one lane, take two lanes, don't take three of them, and you basically leave one lane open for people to pass and they can't see. That's dangerous, man. You know who that irritates the most? Those that are left a little late for work. Well, yeah, look, I, I've driven my entire life. I've pulled trailers across the Cascade Mountain Ranges. I've been in whiteouts in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I've, I've driven a lot. And, and it, all I'm saying is, especially in Dallas, you know, it is worse. It is 10 times worse than Southern California. You know, I flew back and forth for 10, 12, uh, every 10 or 12 days for 17 years, and I've seen some stuff. But, man, uh, Southern California drivers, you know, they're always talking about, well, you got six lanes and they're all full. That's true. Um, but here you got four lanes and three of them are being occupied by 18 wheelers. It's, uh, it's, we're bad drivers here. Just bad drivers, period. Um, I appreciate the call. Please be safe out there. 226 the time. Your call straight ahead. Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom. I don't know how we got off on it. Well, I, I was griping about it. That's how we got off on, got off on it. Okay, your call straight ahead. All right, uh, 2.33 the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Glad you're along. Uh, the Florida House has passed a bill requiring, in God we trust, to be prominently posted in all public uh, schools. The Florida House overwhelmingly passed a bill um, requiring all public schools to post in God We Trust in a conspicuous place. It's not clear if the bill will uh, pass the state legislature, as the Florida Senate has not heard uh, heard the bill this session. Uh, the Florida House overwhelmingly passed it. Uh, it requires all public schools to post in God We Trust in a conspicuous place. The bill's sponsor, are you setting down? Okay. The bill's sponsor is Representative Kimberly Daniels, a Democrat. She runs a ministry and said displaying the phrase, the state motto, is needed in the wake of last week's deadly uh, mass shooting at uh, the high school in Parkland. And she's right. Well, Rick, she's a Democrat. She can't be right. Hey, nobody's 100% wrong. Nobody's 100% right 100% of the time. She's right. Uh, I mean, that's just the way it is. It's uh, while she and the Florida in the state of Florida still need to deal with gun issues, the real thing that needs to be addressed are issues of the heart. And that's what I've been saying since this whole thing started. You know, I had a 13-year-old boy, I think his name was Joey, called me yesterday. He said, Mr. Roberts, if you put a loaded firearm in a table and no human being ever picks it up, it'll never hurt anyone. (laughs) When the kid's right, the kid's right. She uh, noted video games that encourage kids to play the part of virtual assassins 
and said our troubled world must look for answers beyond politics. She's right. We can't put God in a closet when the issues we face are bigger than we are. She's right. She added to her colleagues, urging them to support the measure. The bill uh, passed 97 to 10. They reported that in the newspaper, added uh, that a standing ovation followed. Why is this so tough to figure out? You know, Dick's Sporting Goods, we're not going to sell high-capacity magazines. Look out, boy, you won't find any assault weapons here. Oh, that'll stop sh- uh, school shootings, won't it? Well, I was going to go shoot up to school today, but <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Dick's uh, Sporting Goods quit selling assault rifles. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want, whatever makes you sleep at night, I guess. But, you know, what is that supposed to be? Am I spo- well, I'm going to go buy all my new tackle at Dick's Sporting Goods. It, 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 you know, it, that's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Um, let's go to Joe in Waco. Joe, thanks for waiting. I appreciate your patience. How you doing, Joe? Doing good, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just wondering, I, I agree with what you're saying about needing God in the schools. It's sorely lacking, but it's just interesting that you can't have God, religion, or Bibles in the school, yet they issue them in the jails and in the prisons. <laughs> Seems like if they put them in the schools again, that maybe it would cut down on needing them in the prisons and jails. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I've said it a thousand times to the point of, uh, you know, redundancy. Uh, if you remove God from something, you create a vacuum that nine times out of 10 is going to be filled with something you don't want to mess with because it's going to yeah. be probably something you don't want. Uh, you'd think yeah. in 2018, we'd be smart enough to figure that out. Yes, sir. You would. Um, Definitely would, but that's not the case. No, it's not. And, uh, you know, I, you know, this thing started organically yesterday, and I have no intention of stopping it. No one's come running down the hall, Rick, Rick, you can't do that. You, can't. you know, you might upset a Muslim. You might upset a Jew. You might upset a Hindu. You might. Have, it, nobody has done that. Now, I've been very lucky in my career. Most, uh, most management that I have worked for, have never run in, oh, Rick, you can't do that. I've, you know, I had that once or twice. And they usually sent the attorney in because they knew we were going to have a debate. Uh, but I've never had that. You know, hashtag God and prayer back in schools. Look it up. Facebook, WBAP. You know, uh, I'm, I'm going to prove nationally that people care about, uh, about parameters, guidelines, rules, regulations, and yes, God. You know, every knucklehead agenda that comes out of D.C. ends up filtered through the public education system. Okay, well, how about God and prayer? Oh, well, no, we can't do that. Really? Why? Well, I don't know. We just can't. Well, we're going to try. Uh, E.C. in Wichita Falls. E.C., thanks for waiting. How you doing? Good afternoon, Rick. Appreciate you taking my call. Yes, sir. So let me give you a scenario. I'm an old 75 year old guy, cranky, and I break into a nursing home with my automatic weapon and start laying them out, baby. They can't run, they can't do nothing. I got them. Are we going to have that much outrage about that? Are we going to have that much outrage about, uh, well, probably not, because, uh, you know, the younger the victim of a shooting, the more outpouring of, uh, you know, remorse and um, and that type of thing you get because obviously, you know, kids aren't supposed to die. Well, uh, if people have been doing their job from day one when all this stuff started way back when, I don't think we'd have a problem we have now. What do you What do you mean doing their job? Doing their job, watching the schools. Take a note from the 1999 uh, school massacre. Oh, if, if you, well, yeah, that was Columbine. Here's the problem. 
uh, if you want to know why those kids are dead, it's not because of assault weapons. It's not because of high-capacity uh, magazines. It's not because, uh, you know, he was potty trained backwards or a clown scared him at the circus. Uh, the reason those 17 kids are dead uh, is because liberalism was left unchecked to run rampant through this country. And when people believe that there are, are no consequences for action and there is no responsibility uh, required of them, um, if they take the liberal mindset, then this type of thing uh, simply follows. Well, I appreciate it, Rick. All right, EC, I appreciate the call. Pat in Arlington. Pat, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Pat? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, so to the point, you know, yesterday I couldn't get through, but you had mentioned I don't get Delta, airline, all these people cutting out the NRA because, you know, how's it help? And my thought was that just like Dix, uh, well, Dix is probably more political because to me they're going to lose to name all the other places you can buy guns. But for Delta and these people, to me, it's like, you know what, we're competing with other airlines. And the first thing, if we can increase our revenues, This is simply an economic thing. This gives me an excuse. I'm going to cut out the discounts, not the NRA people, but I'm just going to cut those discounts just like any other place that gives you a discount when you walk in and you say I'm a whatever member. So it's just simply a marketing tool to say this gives me an opportunity to to save 20% on a discount thing for some political thing, but it's clearly about the money and the competition with other people yeah i you know it's it's all a game with these people uh and it's all about marketing uh you know they they weren't sitting down with uh you know people of faith they weren't sitting down even with the legal department they were sitting down with their market managers trying to figure out what would be in their best interest well exactly because if you had a bombing and you say okay if they did give discounts to way back, you know, Irish people because of the wars over there between Christian Protestants or Muslims because they bombed something, that'd be kind of taboo. But, you, oh, man, let's, let's hit some guns. We can save 20% on those few discount tickets. I mean, I'm a member. I never even thought to ask for an NRA discount when I get a flight. I fly all the time. So I don't, you know, it's just a way to save some bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. I think you're, uh, uh, I don't think you're right. I know you're right. 2.43 the time. Let's check your afternoon drive and right back with your calls. Uh, don't you feel safer already? Don't you feel so? Aren't you going to sleep uh, more soundly in your bed tonight that Dex is not going to sell assault rifle? Uh, I mean, I'm about to fall asleep right now. All right, uh, 2.49 the time. Glad you're along. This is Earl and Garland. Earl, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Earl? I'm doing fine. How's your day going? It's going well. Thank you. Good. What's going on? Well, I just I just wanted to point out that, that you know, people are always uh, saying, well, the separation of church and state, that, that's a federal deal. That's the, the federal government can't can't set up a church but but it doesn't have anything to do with the states no i I mean i i do something around christmas time where i show the intent of the founding fathers uh anybody that says oh no we can't have god oh no that's it okay well first of all they they're not reading the writings the founding fathers properly um and the federal government's not supposed to establish a religion a religion all right it wasn't freedom from religion. It was just saying they couldn't establish a religion because the founding fathers didn't want to end up in the same jackpot that they did in England, where the government was also the church. It was the Church of England. Um, you know, and that's a that's a vicious circle of dialogue with no beginning and no end. We had God and prayer in schools for years and years and years until the liberals got their way because the Christians, well, we don't want to sit in judgment. Well, I need to turn the other cheek. Well, well, okay, it's time to stop that. Time to you've trust me, you've run out of cheeks to turn. Uh, it's time to stand up for what you believe in. 
Everybody else does. I mean, we, we allow, you know, midday prayer for Muslim students. We, we, you know, we've bend over backwards trying to make everybody else happy. Well, that's fine. You can do that, but don't wash yourself down the drain in the process. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, let's go to Chris and Rowlett. Chris, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Hey, Rick, I'm great. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I hope I can articulate this properly, but, uh, it seems like liberals, let these things happen. A lot of talk, they care a whole bunch about it, but they never do anything because when these things happen, it moves their uh, agenda forward. So they, 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 they get closer enough. People get upset. Uh, then they come after the second amendment. And it just seems like, you know, it's all talk. They never do anything. Um, because it seems like there's somebody in the back, a bunch of liberals in the black, uh, back room waiting for the next one to happen. No, you're, you know, last night, um, you know, I was, uh, couldn't really sleep. I turned on television. I, uh, the news was on. And there was some company, of, and if any of you saw this, you know, help me out because I, you know, I didn't take notes. There's some company here in Texas that is providing active shooter insurance. It's active shooter insurance policy. And I'm thinking, man, it, it doesn't take long, does it? I mean, never get, let a good crisis go to waste. Hey, have you got your active shooter insurance? You got your kids insured? I mean, give me a break. Yeah. Well, we, we hope we can get something done right up there, but it's tough and it's hard and we're all getting fed up with them. And I think things are changing. I sure hope so. Well, they're not going to change unless we try. And uh, so far, we haven't. So now we are. I appreciate the call very, very much. Alamo Renicar, uh, they've cut their ties with the NRA. Uh, I don't know why. Avis Renicar, we can't have gun owners renting our cars. What if they shoot somebody? Uh, Alamo Renicar, Avis Renicar, Allied Van Lines, Best Western, Budget, Chubb Insurance. You know what Chubb Insurance was? I have no clue what that is. Chubb Insurance. It was one of those, uh, uh, one of those, uh, insurance companies where if you shoot somebody, they come to your defense if it was in self defense. Really? Yeah. That makes lots of sense. To no me. sense. No sense at all. Delta Airlines, Enterprise Rent a Car, uh, First National Bank of Omaha. They were the ones that did the branded, uh, Visa card for the NRA members. Hertz, MetLife Insurance, North American Van Lines, Paramount RX Discount Pharmacy, uh, Simply Safe. That's the uh, oh, Norton antivirus and all that stuff, uh, or Semantic. That might have been them. Uh, True Car, where you buy cars online. Uh, and I get. Oh, don't let's not forget Dick's Last. Or excuse me, I started to say Dick's Last Resort at San Diego Gas Lamp Theater. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, we're not selling any more assault style rifles. No high magazines. Wait, and you got to be twenty one. No, let's make. You know, let's not make it twenty one. Let's make it forty two. That makes about as much sense. Forty two. You got to be. 57 years old to buy a slingshot at Dick's. I mean, come on. You know, what What are the, they think we were born at night? Most of us were, but not last night. 2.54 the time. And we'll check out uh, Eric Bushman in the WBAP newsroom. And then we'll tell you what we're going to do tomorrow and uh, how you can make your voice heard. Sorry, Rick, I was on the phone right there. I knew you tossed it to me. We were going to talk about. The Facebook Live, is that correct? Oh, 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 yeah. We'll do that when we get back. Not a problem. We'll do that when we get back. Don't miss that. Uh, maybe one of the most important things we do all day. We'll do that as soon as we return on News Talk 820 WBAP. Time to be a few hundred million more like me Just trying to keep it free yeah. Rick Roberts starts Rick Roberts starts right now all right, uh, 3.04 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Uh, if you, okay, David, let's uh, do this because I'm going to keep this alive. Um, you know, I keep hearing from liberal avenues everywhere I go. Uh, people don't want God in schools. Nah, you, you have to go to church if you want that God guy. Uh, no, no, prayer. What are you talking about with prayer? Yeah, do that in church. If, you know what? 
if you want to stop school shootings, if you want to stop the disrespect that leads to school shootings, if you want to stop the mental imbalance, you put God and prayer back in schools. If we can set aside a classroom for Muslims to pray during the day, why can I not talk about my God and my prayer in schools? Well, uh, I was uh, I was motivated by several national sites. God and prayer back in schools. Forty nine people responded, banning the NRA from Amazon live live streaming. Thousands responded. I'm sorry, I'm not buying it, not buying it. So I decided to jump in with both feet on the social media, and I'm going to make I'm going to expose this nationally. Already have the people lined up to do so. So if you would like, you can go to Facebook, WBAP. Uh, You'll see my picture. I'm not sure why my picture is the first thing you see, but scroll down. Keep scrolling until you see hashtag God and prayer back in school. Um, And you can uh, can make make a comment. Please share it, um, if you would. And then uh, David is setting up uh, Twitter or something tomorrow, right? Oh, I've already done the Twitter. So okay. 16 minutes ago, I sent a tweet. I didn't tell you about it. No. But we have one comment. I can't get to it right now. Three ret- three retweets and four, they like it, hearts. Okay, well, you did that a couple of minutes ago? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what about the Facebook? Because that's uh, really where uh, a ton of people showed up. You commented. Uh, I think there's like a 1,000 comments Uh, a ton of shares, and uh, we're keeping those numbers so I can expose those numbers nationally. How many people have been contacted uh, just on that one thing? Oh, of course you would ask me that, and that's when my computer starts to refresh. And right in front of me, of course, that is that the way it always works? So I don't know. Well, it does. Right now, we're sitting at 43,672. 43,672, so almost uh, 44,000 people have been reached. Pretty close. Okay, uh, again, go to Facebook, WBAP, scroll down uh, until you see my picture the second time, and it'll have hashtag God and Prayer back in schools, and um, you can like that, share it, um, you can uh, comment, and I am pulling these off like 50 at a time, because I can't read, you know, 1,500 comments all at one time, but I'm pulling them off a little at a time. And last night I went I went through and I replied to everybody that sent us a, a private message. Oh, I good. thanked all of them. Okay. I was up to about 11:30 and some of them replied back and let's talk radio man. There you go. It's no it's no 9 to 5er. Not it's, a problem. Especially if you're a producer. Hey, well, I kind of know that. All right. So we've got uh, about 43,000 people reached um little over 4,200 reactions, comments and shares. Um, and this is all you guys. This is all you. Um, all I did was throw it out there. Now, tomorrow, um, you want me to do something live. Is that correct? Yeah, it's called Facebook Live. Yeah. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my phone, I'm going to put it in the studio, and you're, we're going to do our first segment live. On Facebook. On Facebook. And we'll only do one segment at a time. Okay. So it's... It's just a way to bring so them into the door. basically, I just sit here behind the microphone and do my thing. That's correct. Okay. Nothing special. All right. Just do the Rick Roberts show the way the Rick Roberts show Are is supposed to do. Are you saying the Rick Roberts show is nothing special? Is I'm saying, saying, no, we don't have to is put that, on. Is that what I heard? No, what you heard is. Really? I think that's what I heard, isn't it? <laughs> Putting words in my mouth yeah, already. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Rick Roberts show is nothing special. <laughs> Maybe he's on Bluetooth. Huh. Maybe, yeah, could be. Yeah, pro- I'm on speakerphone. All right, so we're going to do the first segment tomorrow show. That's from 2.03 to 2.11. Um, we'll do that live on Facebook. That's correct. Um, and, you know, I don't ask a lot of my audience. You really came through for that fallen police officer in Richardson. You sure really, did. really came through. We're going to be talking with David Prince in a little bit about that and see how much money you have actually raised for that uh, his widow and his two daughters. Uh, we'll uh, do that in about 15 minutes. In the meantime, um, Facebook, WBAP, scroll all the way down uh, to my picture the second time. Why is my picture up there the first time? What's what's that for? Well, I just put your picture on there so they know who you are. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you got to go to the second picture to comment, right? Right. Okay. Now, there's a second post, and that was a mistake because I was driving, 
and my phone fell open and it opened up the Facebook and I reshared it again earlier mm-hmm. today. Yeah. And I just didn't go back and delete it. People reacted to it, so I just didn't okay. get rid of it. All right. Uh, well, we're going to let the rest of the country know. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth is a huge radio market. Maybe a lot of people don't realize that. Top five in the U.S. Top five in the United States. I think we're just behind San Francisco. If mm-hmm. I'm not That's mistaken. correct. Um, it's like New York, Los Angeles, uh, what Chicago, Chicago. Uh, San Francisco, and Dallas Fort Worth. So we are a huge, huge radio media market. Um, so they pay attention to what we do here in the state of Texas. And, of course, this show, you if you've got the app, you can listen anywhere you want, coast to coast. But um, Dallas-Fort Worth is where we're based out of, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5. So um, please make your reaction um, at Facebook, share it, because uh, that's the key to as many people as we can get. And then I'm going to bring these numbers to a national audience. And, um, you know, then... Have them tell me, well, people don't care about God and prayer in school. They don't? Really? Well, let me show you something. Um, all right. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Got a ton of people on hold. Uh, if you're on hold, you get your day in the court of public opinion. Also, how much money you have raised for the fallen Richardson police officer's family, his widow and his two daughters. Uh, that's coming up as well. On News Talk, 820 W. Seventeen minutes after the hour, forty-three thousand of you have responded to our Facebook post, and um, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Tomorrow we'll be doing uh, Facebook Live um, in the first segment. All right, let me get to your calls, Jeff in Granbury. Jeff, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Uh, great, Rick. Um, just uh, I'm in Grand Prairie. I apologize. All right. Good. Um, just two things. Uh, two things uh, I'll talk about, and I'll get off the phone. Um, the yeah, Dick Sporting Goods. I was down in the in one, and they told me they, they told me they stopped selling assault style weapons about four years ago. Two and years ago. Got a, yeah, no, they told me four. Um, and, uh, and then I also they told me that uh, that tw- they were that's twenty one thing is like nuts. So, um, so I guess I won't be partaking in. Uh, Buying anything from uh, Dick Sporting Goods, and the other thing, my kid, remember what happened yesterday at Ronald Reagan Middle School? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, both, yeah. yeah. Both my kid, both my kids go there, and I just want to bring a fact out that the Grand Prairie Police did a fantastic job uh, uh, investigating that and keeping law, uh, keeping the law and order there at the school, and uh, also the police officer that works there as well. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, unfortunately, when when something like this happens. And the adults lose their mind and let the kids start running the school. Um, copycats spring up all over the country. Um, here in Texas, we've done a pretty good job of keeping a lid on that and, uh, you know, treating kids. Okay. This is a public school. It's not the, uh, the local event center for protest. Um, I, I think they've done a pretty good job. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Josh in Plano. Josh, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Josh? Hey, Rick. Doing good. Appreciate you taking my call. I um, want to talk about um, the school districts and how they protect uh, the schools. Uh, my daughter goes to a school district in Collin County, and over the years, I've tried to talk to him about the access points in the schools. And uh, you know, you walk in the school, pretty much open the door. You know, to your right, you say hi to the, uh, the the person who runs the front desk. And then, you know, if you decide to, if a maniac decides to assault that person, then they have access to the lunchroom where there's 150 kids. And it's it's never made sense to me why they don't adjust, at least lock the front door, right? So what I've done is I started reaching out to the school superintendent, um, offering to be on committees, pushing them to take advantage of the school marshal program, and um, I think I think it's important to get the word out for your listeners. Email your school superintendents. Um, push them to do something, whether it's lock the doors. I don't know if everyone wants to have 
handguns on teachers in school, I'm okay with it, but do something. Um, second thing, the NRA, I, I, I'm not too thrilled about the posture that they take um, after these types of events. Um, I think they're a little bit arrogant, um, but I understand what they do, and I, I kind of appreciate what they do, but I wish they would take a different posture, and I don't know what the suggestion is for that. Uh, I think Three. I think number one, the the posturing you see is because all of a sudden, for no good reason whatsoever, they became a target, uh, and so they were put in a defensive posture to begin with. I, I'm still yeah. trying to figure out. I mean, I immerse myself in this mess uh, every single day. I'm still trying to figure out how the NRA was connected to a school shooting in any way, shape, or form. Uh. Yeah, I guess we'll have to save that for another day. Uh, the third thing I wanted to mention is we, we took a trip to Israel uh, in November, and they take a totally different posture to their school security. They have armed guards there, you know, open carry, hit pistol. These these things aren't toys to them. The kids don't look at them as anything other, you know, it's just like a pencil in the classroom to them. So it's it's part of the culture. Unfortunately, we are being pushed towards that culture uh, it's, it's it's sad um also i like your posture on the uh the prayer rooms in the school you keep nailing that point man it's awesome well it, it, to me it's the only thing that is going to be effective long term we can put armed police in the schools and i think we should uh that's a temporary fix but if we're going to have any long-term fixed uh fix it's going to have to be reinstilling the value to human life um, you know, between movies and video games and, and music that talks about killing cops and women are, you know, well, I can't even say that, um, and abortion on demand and all the rest. I mean, we've created a culture that doesn't value human life anymore. Well, if you're going to fix school shootings or any other kind of violence, you're going to have to reinstill some value to human life. And how do you do that? Best way I can think, and we've seen it work before, is putting God in prayer back in schools. And tell the liberals, if you don't like it, go to a different school, a home school, a private school, whatever you want. we got to stop, you know, bending over backwards for two or three people in a school system. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, thank you for the call. I appreciate it, Josh. Let's go to Bob. And um, I'm not sure where Bob is calling from. Where are you calling from, Bob? This is Bob from Rochester. I spoke to you the other day, and I want to thank you again for taking my call here. You bet. <clears throat> hey, I was just watching Fox News a little while ago and uh, noticed that the president was meeting with uh, kind of a joint committee uh, to discuss the gun violence in schools. And one of the things that was discussed was uh, immediately removing guns from those who are mentally ill. Well, oh, they shouldn't have them in the first place. Oh, oh, absolutely, Rick. But here's the problem that I see with that. If that legislation is passed, who's going to make the determination as to who is mentally ill? Okay, today we might have people that are reasonable, and <clears throat> and maybe they say, you know, if you've done certain uh, felonious acts, or if you, you know, if you're uh, doing things that are putting other people at risk. Uh, yeah, you're, you might be considered mentally ill, but w let's say we get somebody in office that decides, you know what, we really need to get the guns out of the hands of these people, these these wacko Christians or these wacko... Well, that's that's not a mental illness. There's There are plenty of benchmarks to determine uh, the mental stability of an individual. And it's not, it's not hypothetical. It's not random. It's not, uh, you know, it's not, uh, something that somebody comes up with. I mean, there are, uh, benchmarks for mental stability in the workplace, in private life. Um, and if you have been institutionalized and, um, you know, schizophrenic and I, I mean, guy off the street isn't going to say, okay, this guy's nuts. This guy isn't. I mean, it would have to, it would have to run, uh, its course through the mental health system. I mean, how many billions of dollars do we spend on that? Um, you know, I understand what you're saying, but by the same token, you know, that, uh, I can't even envision that being a problem. 
uh, if you're mentally ill, if you've been uh, medicated for uh, mental uh, instability, if you've been institutionalized, um, you shouldn't be going down and getting a gun. That didn't make sense. Um, we, you know, we ought to probably keep sharp ob- objects away from you too, so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, but I do understand what you're saying, Bob. I appreciate the call. Three twenty-five. The time. I'm Rick Roberts. News Talk eight twenty WBAP. When we come back, how much money you've raised for the fallen Richardson police officer? All right, uh, welcome, 3.33 the time. It, um, I, I got to tell you, you, uh, you, have, <laughs> you have simply amazed me. Um, of course, we lost a, a police officer, um, uh, David Sherrard. Uh, he's been laid to rest, uh, leaving behind his, uh, his widow, his wife, and two, two daughters, um, David Prince, if you don't know, is the owner of Eagle Gun Range, uh, two locations, um, and we'll tell you where th- what those are. He he stepped up and said, we're going to do a raffle. We're going to raffle off a, a nice rifle, uh, $10 a piece. And then uh, one of his vendors kicked in a, a handgun, very nice handgun. And then another uh, <laughs> another person kicked in a, one of those uh, metal fire pits, about a $1,000 fire pit. And then on top of that, somebody, uh, you know, donated some uh, some tickets um, with uh, access to the Lexus, uh, Lexus booth. I, I mean, just... It just took off organically. I think initially David had, uh, had envisioned raising about $10,000, every single penny going, uh, to the family of this fallen police officer. And David's with me now to give me some new numbers. David, how you doing? Rick, I'm great. I appreciate the call. Well, we got to tell folk, first of all, um, you're raffling off. Uh, now what's, what's the date of the drawing? I, I don't have that in front of me. Yeah, the drawing is going to be on the 12th. We're going to take donations and, and sell raffle tickets through the 11th of March. And then on the 12th, when we open that morning, we're going to pull the winning tickets on March 12th. So they have, the people still have 11 days to get by um, one of the stores or go online and donate. But they can go by either one of the stores, the 491 West Valley Ridge in Louisville or the 14400 Midway Road here in Farmers Branch. So, right. But uh, to your answer your question, <laughs> you're right. I was I was hoping we'd get ten thousand dollars, but because of you and your listeners and your support and our great customers and employees, we've raised thirty thousand and fourteen dollars for that precious family. Wow, that's that, and, and thank you to every single listener out there uh, yes. that uh, you know took a moment out of their day to reach out in some tangible fashion. Um, David, tell people what you're raffling off in case they want to get involved with the raffle. Well, there's an FN Scar. It's a it's a, uh, a sport rifle. It's a chambered in five five six. It's a great looking rifle. It's uh, flat dark earth. Uh, collapsible stock it's a just a really really nice rifle it's um thirty three hundred dollar uh, retail value then there's a um, hk 40 cal pistol and then like you mentioned circle k has given us or circle j has given us a thousand dollar fire pit that yeah, will do all those raffling those three winners will be pulled for that and then i had uh, black all mechanical our the ones that handle our big old air handler mover uh, maintenance, they're going to. Uh, they gave us three, um, two games, four seats, seats each. They're worth about five hundred dollars, and one of them's worth four hundred dollars. Was the set? So and what yes, what games, games are these? I didn't put that down, Rick. I'm sorry. It's uh, like sometime in mid March, mid to late March. It's like March 25th, March 29th. Uh, I didn't, it's on our website, uh, or Facebook page. Uh, I did not get those. I'm sorry. No, but it does give them access to the, to Lexus room and parking pass and four tickets. Um, it's 18 rows off of the ice on the, one of the goal lines. And, um, if you want to just donate, uh, you can do that too. Tell them how to do that. Uh, www.eaglegunrangetx.com. 
dot com and just click on the dot uh, button right there at the top it says the officer's name and uh, donate and just uh just click there and it'll take you to our uh facebook page or I mean, our, our or PayPal or whatever. That's over my head, Rick. It's just <laughs> one of our accounts. I'm a dinosaur. I just tell her yes, ma'am, and she just tells me where to go. So I just I do that. Oh, I've met your done. wife. She's got it all under control. Yes, sir. She does. So we appreciate her and everything she's doing behind the scenes to take care of this. And, and my employees, they're doing a great job of of uh, putting this um, all together. And um, like I said, we've donated the rifle. The, my distributor uh, has donated the pistol and then all this other so that we can be able to provide uh, all $30,000. Every cent of it goes to the family. $30,000. That's that's, yeah. that's amazing. That's staggering it? to me. Staggering. Like I said, we've been doing this for six years for one cause or another, and we've probably raised forty five, forty six thousand dollars $46,000 in those five years for different causes. So it puts this in comparison. We did 30 just in this one versus, you know, six years, five years worth of uh, 46,000. So it's just, it's very gratifying from our customers and from your listeners. Well, we, uh, we appreciate just being able to be a part of it and tell people about what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I've been out to uh, David's place and, you know, it is state of the art and nothing but professional. Uh, now, David, I need, I need a favor. I need you to go to our Facebook. Uh, hashtag God and prayer back in schools. Uh, amen to that. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that uh, for certain. Uh, and uh, we uh, that's a needed, horribly we, needed. We started this yesterday about, if I'm not mistaken, about three thirty, four o'clock, something like that. Um, about three thirty or four, and so far, um, the number of people reached um, by Facebook's numbers. 42, no, excuse me, 43,000 people. Oh, sick, yeah. uh, that just, uh, that's just amazing to me. So it's no surprise that uh, when we have uh, one of our finest uh, killed in the line of duty, people want to reach out in a tangible way. And, and again, just uh, thank you for what you're doing, David. We appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it too, Rick. My wife follows you on the Facebook. I don't even know how to get into one. And she, <laughs> she's been following it and noticed that it had been posted. And y'all were up to like two hundred and something, just really quick. And and uh, I'll I probably she's already been on it for me. And and uh, we'll make sure we do that. And uh, and just I uh, just uh, pray God's blessing on your listeners for being such uh, wonderful people. Well, David, thank you so much. This is David Prince, owner of Eagle Gun Range. Um, the two locations, uh, just if you don't, if you're driving, just go home and Google Eagle Gun Range, um, or uh, you'll find it. It's easy to find two locations, uh, really stepping up to help this, uh, family, a uh, fallen officer, <clears throat> Sherrard, and, uh, every single penny will go to the family. And, uh, David, we'll touch base again before the drawing. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Rick. God bless you, buddy. All right, David. Thank you so much. Uh, 3.42 the time. We'll do a little business. Then right back to your calls and nothing but your calls in the court of public opinion. Oh, also, let me get this. I'm not going to let this go. Somebody said, Rick, you can forget God and prayer back in schools. It's never going to happen again. Um, really? You, you're going to tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know me very well, does he? He doesn't. Uh, he will if he keeps listening. Well, yeah. And, uh, you know, some. my grandfather used to say, you know, some fights are worth fighting even if you don't know you're, whether you're going to win or not. And I never really realized what that meant until I got a lot older. But, uh, no, we're going to keep this up. We're going to keep it up with Facebook and Twitter. And then I'm going to give it a national audience uh, so that other people can get involved and say, well, I'm sorry, the free to be you and me hug a tree folks, uh, they're not going to run our schools from now on. You know, it, it's not going to be easy. I get, as a matter of fact, when we come back, you know, sometimes in a study hall or it can be any class, if you finish up your work, you, you get free reading time. You can bring a book and read, right? Well, what if that book during your free reading time happened to be a bible what do you think would happen what do you think the teacher would do you can't do anything really well the teacher 
made them put the Bible up. We don't do that in school. And then she made a phone call to the parents to chastise them for allowing the kid to bring the Bible to school to read during their free reading time. I've got a recording of that phone call. I'll play for you next. 343 the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me I can't do something. All right. Uh, as always, everybody has a different point of view. Somebody was arguing the fact that's not what Chubb is. Chubb is blah, 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 blah. Chubb Insurance gave notice that it's uh, going to stop participating in the NRA insurance program known as NRA Carry Guard. It's an insurance policy for people that carry and, uh, God forbid, have to shoot somebody. It's a self, uh, you know, self defense type, uh, form of insurance. It's called the NRA insurance program known as NRA carry guard. And Chubb uh, underwrote that, uh, that particular program. They say they're not going to do it anymore. Um, all right. Now, uh, do you remember, you remember back in school, every once in a while you'd get free, uh, free reading time. I mean, you couldn't just sit there and sleep at your desk or stare out the window, but you could read, you could bring a book from home and read. Well, in this particular case, this kid, th- this teacher keeps referring it to as a book. Well, it's a book, I suppose. Um, it's a Bible. That's what he brought to school. He brought to school a Bible, and that's what he chose to read during his free reading time. Well, the teacher told him to put it away and take it home. He said his parents said he didn't have to. So the teacher got on the phone to the parents and uh, left this message. Good morning, Mr. Rubio, Mrs. Thomas. Uh, uh, Giovanni called you because I asked him to. I noticed that he has a book, a religious book, in the classroom. He's not permitted to read those books in my classroom. He said, if I told him to put it away, you you said not to do that. So please give me a call. I need to have some understanding on direction to him about the book he's reading as opposed to the curriculum for public school. Mrs. F. Thomas, thank you and have a wonderful day. All right. Well, God bless you, too. Um, yeah, the curriculum was not the issue because it was free reading time. But according to this teacher, that religious book you can't have in a schoolroom. You can't uh, be reading that book. Uh, Ms. Thomas, with all due respect, and I wouldn't know you if you fell in out of the ceiling tile, I would venture to say if more of your kids were reading that book, um, maybe they wouldn't be so violent with each other. Uh, hashtag God and prayer back in school, WBAP or Facebook, WBAP, scroll down to where it says hashtag uh, God and prayer in school. David, you got some numbers for me? Have your, has your computer come back up? Yes, sir, it has came back up, and right now we're at 44,000. Wow, 1,000 in just 10 minutes. Doesn't take long. Man, that's amazing. Uh, Chuck in Garland. Chuck, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Chuck? Oh, thank you, Rick, for taking my call. Uh, I, while I was on hold, I got two things to ask. Number one for you, number two for the audience. Um, I, I sent you an email, but if if we can blame NRA for all these mass shootings, why can't we blame AAA Auto Club for all the mass deaths on nation's highway? <laughs> Something to think about. It makes about as much sense, yeah. Okay, Rick, I need you to back off. I want to talk just to your listeners. All right. I'm, I'll sit over here. I'll be over here. Go All ahead. Right. The listeners of WBAP, I have listened to Rick Roberts for the last 20 years when he was first here in Dallas. Do not, do not tell Rick Roberts what he can or cannot do because you will be sadly disappointed. He will prove you wrong every day of the week. If he says he wants prayer in God back in schools, buckle your seatbelts. He will do whatever it takes. He will talk to whoever it takes, and he will put the 
the mustard on the bread to get it done. <laughs> You've been listening for a long time there, Chuck. Well, I started with you back when you were at the other radio station, and you and I have met. And um, so, yeah, I know a little bit about Rick Roberts and what you've shared over the airways and watched over the years on what you will accomplish when you decide you're going to do it. Well, that is, uh, that's, that's very kind. I appreciate that very much. And yeah, we, uh, we got some stuff going at that other, uh, radio station at the time that radio station was in the ballpark in Arlington. Um, I remember a throwdown with Michael Irvin at the time. We, we got a lot of stuff going. I think at one point we had the Black Panthers, um, uh, with their rifles. I made them take their magazines out and put them in the studio. Um, we, uh, we, we did a lot, Chuck. I appreciate it. And remember when the black churches were burned down back in the late nineties? Uh, on one, one show, one show alone, we got enough donated time um expertise and material to rebuild those three black churches plus an extra one so uh just about i'm I'm a firm believer that just about anything can be done as long as people keep talking so hashtag god and prayer back in schools we had it at one time it makes sense and it certainly certainly worked until we let liberalism infiltrate our schools and our our kids minds um, liberalism never works out. Never. Uh, you're free to be the biggest idiot you want to be. Uh, I'm not going to keep you from that, but you can't have my kids and you can't have my country. Either one. All right. 1-800. Well, before I do that, uh, David, tell people how to go to the Facebook and the, and the Twitter account. Not a problem. What you do is you're going to go to Facebook and you're going to go to WBAP, put that in your search bar. Then if you want to talk about the post that we're talking about right now, it's roughly 24 hours old, and you have to scroll like halfway down the page, and that's the post that we're talking about currently. Right. Uh, right now, it's sitting at 44,337 posts. So if you do the same thing, you can go to Twitter, and you'll type in WBAP 24-7 News. You're going to follow them, and then you'll get every tweet that we send out. And right now... I don't know how far down on the page I am right now. I just have our post pulled up, and we have 21 retweets, 27 likes, and over 10 comments. Okay. Well, then you just started that, right? About an hour ago. Okay. All right. And, um, you know, we're going to keep doing this for a little while, and uh, once we get it up there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expose it nationally because, uh, you know, I, I don't buy that uh, nobody cares about God and prayer in school. I don't buy that, not for a second. And I don't bre- believe uh, the loony left, the liberalism uh, that is, you know, taking our kids hostage in their schools. I don't believe there are more of them than there are of people that, uh, you know, I, I got a ton of comments last night from people that weren't even Christian. They just said, look, I don't have a God of any particular uh, type, uh, but, you know, the Christian principles make sense to have in the schools. So there you go. 3.55 the time. I'll be back. Your call straight ahead on News Talk 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be. A few hundred million more like me Just trying to keep it free yeah. Rick Roberts starts Rick Roberts starts right now All right, uh, four minutes after the hour 4.04 the time Well, Dick's uh, Sporting Goods Not selling a salt type rifle I don't know who within Dick's makes the determination of what an assault rifle is. Uh, but, uh, you know, they came out today and made a lot of noise about, we're not selling assault rifles. Well, I, I don't think they sell many anyway, do they? I think they quit selling rifles like two years ago. Uh, who knows? Um, six years ago. All right. Well, uh, there's some marketing guy at Dick's said, hey, now's a good time to let people know we're against assault rifles. Okay. All right, Dex. Hey, you know what? Bass Pro's right down the street. 
Um, you know, I'll get what I need down there. Uh, all right, let's go to Will in Garland. Will, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Will? I'm doing good. Rick. How you doing today? Good. All right. Um, first of all, let me start off by saying, man, I'm a Christian too, and I'm, I've listened to you, and I know you are too, right? I try to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, if if we if we decide, you know, we were going to go into where they were having prayer at, and you know, and once prayer was done, we might not agree on the same thing that was being prayed about, right? Might not, yeah. Okay, so therefore, what I'm saying is, I I don't think uh, prayer has been taken out of school. I don't, I just think as a Christian, you don't you don't need to go into a room, or you don't need to get, you know, you know, when you're at school or at work, you don't need to go off by yourself, or, or if you do, go to the restroom. And no, I'm not going to go pray to my God in the toilet, but thank you uh, for that suggestion. Um, you know, there was a point in time when we said the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God, not under, uh, hold on, let me run to the bathroom real quick. Um, okay, now we can finish. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, the goal of the First Amendment, <clears throat> excuse me, the goal of the First Amendment, Will, was to protect religious expression not restrict it. In the last 50, maybe 60 years, non-establishment has been redefined as separation. I'll say that again. Uh, In the last half century, non-establishment has been redefined as separation. And you can probably figure out who redefined it. Effectively, It amended the Constitution, and it isolated Christians from the political process. You will be a casualty in their religious war. Um, That that was a headline in the L.A. Times at one point. Underneath, I think they had pictures of uh, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson. I don't know. There were a bunch of pictures there, along with condemning quotes substantiating their apparent jihad against secularist. You know, in the text of the advertisement read something, the radical religious right has declared war on America. It's a war of ideas, a war of conscience, a religious war, blah, blah, blah. Well, it went on to promote a book by Robert Boston entitled Why the Religious Right is Wrong About the Separation of Church and State. Um, you know, the ad was correct in a, in a couple ways, on a couple points. There is a sense in which the religious right is at war, but the battle is not against America. It's about America, not against it. And it is a war of ideas. There's no doubt about that. Is there a legitimate separation of church and state? And what does that mean? Well, the current understanding of separation of church and state, that's the view that the state is thoroughly secular, 100%, 110% secular. It's not influenced by religious values, especially Christian. That was completely foreign to the first 150 years of American political thought. Clearly, clearly. The Founding Fathers did not try to excise every vestige of Christian religion, Christian thought, Christian values from all facets of public life. They were friendly to Christianity, and they encouraged its public practice and its public expression. It wasn't until 1947 that the United States Supreme Court first used the concept of separation to isolate government from religion. Only happened one time previous to that. The phrase was mentioned once before in a discourse of the court in the late 1800s. It's the case of Reynolds versus the United States. When Mormons attempted an unsuccessful defense of polygamy based on the non-establishment clause. And they believed that protected Mormon beliefs and the Mormon practice of polygamy. 
the conduct was still prescribed by prevailing morality at the time, specifically Christian morality. In Everson versus the Board of Education, the court lifted a phrase from a letter. Thomas Jefferson wrote to a Baptist church in Danbury, Connecticut. The court ruled neither a state nor the federal government can set up a church. Establish. Set up. Fill in the blank. Neither can pass laws which aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion over another. In the words of Jefferson, the clause against establishment of religion by law was intended to erect a wall of separation between church and state. And, of course, that's the famous Danbury letter. In the Everson versus Board of Education decision, the Supreme Court quoted Jefferson's separation language as a guideline for understanding the First Amendment. There's probably no other instance in American history where words were spoken by an individual and then became the law of the land. Jefferson's remark now carries more weight in judicial circles than any other writing of any other founder. Thomas Jefferson wasn't a member of the Constitutional Convention. And the phrase separation of church and state does not, repeat, does not appear anywhere in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. So where did it come from? On January, early 1800s, 1801, 02, 03, something like that, Jefferson wrote a letter to the Danbury Baptist Association of Danbury, Connecticut, in which he used the phrase, a wall of separation between church and state. His note was meant to basically calm the fears of the Danbury congregation who were concerned that a national denomination was going to be established, just like they left with the Church of England. So what did Jefferson have in mind there? Is there, an, uh, is there a barrier erected uh, by the founders? Well, to the broader group responsible for the passage of the Bill of Rights, and for those people that don't know, that's the first ten amendments to the Constitution. That excludes religious-minded people from the political process. It's an ideological uh, form between church and state, is it not? That's the question. So it takes you to the First Amendment. In contrast to the present confusion about separation, the First Amendment is is about as clear as a pane of glass, offering no limit, no limit to the impact of religious and moral conviction of individual citizens on, on, on public policy. It's worth reading often. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment, a setup of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So, you know, I, I mean, sorry for pointing out the obvious. Um so no, I, I'm I'm not going to go pray in the bathroom. That was a long way around the barn to say, no, God doesn't belong in the bathroom. Well, he does, but he belongs everywhere else too. All right, 19 minutes after the hour, 419 the time. Glad you're along. This is Mason, Mason and Glenn Rose. Mason, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Um, I've originally had something else I was going to talk about, but you've covered a lot of material in the past about 30 minutes. So I'm going to first bring up the uh, separation of church and state and uh, God and schools. Okay. Um, I firm, uh, uh, was that teacher from Texas? Because I don't. I, I hope not. <laughs> what what teacher? Oh, the, the oh no. audio. No, huh? I think that no. was on the East Coast. Okay, yeah, because the Bible is actually on the UIL list of books that are most important to read by students in the high school level. It, the Bible is the number two book, and they mean from front to back. It's part of the curriculum, and a lot of teachers don't teach it 
because it's still it's risky on them. A lot of a lot of teachers would teach it if they didn't have, have the worry of some student raising a ruckus right. and then getting fired. Well, going home and and talking to mom and dad, which are probably, you know, um, <laughs> what what kind word can I use? Well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, the the other thing is that with separation from church and state, I, I firmly believe in that uh, because the, the state, the government, is never supposed to take a side. So whenever you're saying bring God and prayer into schools, I, I, I like that just so long as the school isn't forcing the students and requiring the students to do those things. Because even with basic books, a student can say, "Hey, I, you know, this book is this book is something that you know it covers materials that I'm not comfortable with. You know, if, if a teacher requires an atheistic book or something like that, and the teacher is then required to assign a different book. So that's something that I hope would be accounted for in schools if you were to bring God and the Bible back into schools. Yeah, that's my plan: bring God and prayer back in school. I mean. Uh, even even people that are not Christians, even people that are of different faiths, um, I mean, there's there's no argument that the the country of America was founded on biblical principles. Uh, people of other faith have have already conceded to that, uh, but oh, we yeah. we have no values now, none. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, and society has been getting worse and worse as religion has kind of gone away you start seeing atheism more and more well it didn't it, religion didn't go when it, i'm not a big fan of the word religion um but biblical principles and god didn't go away we chivalry acti- kind, we, kind of and we actively removed them yeah i can i can see that but and, and that's kind of brings up the other point with the way society is moving something else that you tend to bring up is with enter- entertainment and uh um, the violence that we see and the uh, things they say on songs and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that they don't contribute to this whole idea. You know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of children, you know, five, six years old, listening to this rap and playing call of duty and all that kind of stuff, you know, cause they're too young. Your mind is more easily impressed upon, but the teenagers, the people, you know, my age and the people who are 15, 16, 17 years old, the, the, if, if, if a video game's causing them to go out and kill somebody, something was already wrong with them. Well, it's it's not just any video. How old are you, if I may ask? Uh, 18. You're 18. Okay. Uh, you have a filter. We all do. Uh, you've only got so much life experience uh, at 18. And generally, it's going to be um, probably the last five years from 13 forward. You know, prior to that, just about your every move was dictated by someone else. It's not just a video. We're not talking about Pac-Man or Centipede or Space Invaders. We're talking about video games uh, where you can uh, realistically drive a car, stop, get your dope, uh, shoot up, uh, stop at another corner, pick up a hooker, be pleasured while you're driving. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about almost almost a, a different society in video games and then the songs that advocate killing police officers and people of authority you it's not not just one thing it's the entire society as a culture that has dissolved into absolutely nothing yeah i mean you know cuz you look at entertainment from you know even just from the 50s and forward it's gotten steadily less and less there's been less material to it. It's just, you know, you can just look at music and music is, they can say the same word 500 times and that's a song, you know, and it's, it's the dumbing down of our culture is what I like to call it. And, but whenever it comes to like the games where you're killing people and stuff like that, and you know, GTA is the one that a lot of people go to where you can go and you can shoot up and you do all that kind of stuff. You know, it, whenever you get, whenever you're a teenager, that kind of stuff, yeah, you know, it's stuff that happens in real life. And so just hiding it and not letting it be a part of your entertainment, it's not a good thing, but it's also should that not be allowed? Well, well, what do you, no, I, I think personally there are video games out there um, that I personally, 
I personally wouldn't think uh, would be acceptable for public consumption. But, you know, I'm not the authority. I think there should be, and there are, age ratings on certain videos, uh, as there is with music when you go buy a CD. Um, But you're right. It's not the dumbing down of America. It's the secularization of America. You know, there is no right. There is no wrong. If you can get away with it, it's fine. And you put all those things together, not one just by itself, but you put all of that and then abortion on demand. You put all of those things together. And then what you have done is socialize a culture to not value human life. And if you don't value human life, you have no problem taking the next step, which is taking a human life. You see, and I I don't feel like because, you know, people still even the the people that play the video games, I play the video games, you know, most all most every teenager does, you know, and part of that is, you know, those who had parents who were responsible and said, you're not playing these violent video games until you're older typically aren't as violent minded as those who have been playing these violent games since they were, you know, first. That's, that's my entire point. Um, you know, I did the same thing with my kids, you know, uh, you know, I put, uh, I put a cap on what kind of video games could even be in the house, you know, let alone whether they watch and I can't control where, you know, what he's doing at his buddy's house, but under this roof, you're not doing this or you're not doing that. That's called parenting. And if you don't want to do it, don't have a kid. Uh, you know, nobody ever said parenting was easy. Listen, good call. I appreciate it, Mason, very much. I got to step aside. Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom, the very latest breaking news. We'll check that afternoon drive and then your calls next on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 434 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. David, get ready. We're going to tell people how to uh, how to have their voice heard on the issue of putting God in prayer back in schools. We'll do that at uh, about the quarter hour. Uh, let's get to your calls. Paul and Justin. Paul, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Paul? Good, Rick. Thanks for taking my call, sir. It's a great, uh, great show today. Thank um, you. I got a couple things. Uh, some I've noticed, and I don't know if it's just me. But everybody's talking about the NRA. They're either blaming the NRA or blaming Trump or blaming the gun. I haven't really heard a whole lot about blaming the guy that had the gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it, there's really almost nothing out there. Um, and that all kind of ties into the whole thing you're talking about, bringing uh, God and prayer back into schools, into public schools. Um, I've been saying for a while that the problem with our country is not – so much the leaders, it's it's the breakdown of the family, the breakdown of the family union. And a huge thing about Christianity is that there, there's a pecking order, and it's respect of that pecking order and respect of the elders and respect of the family and, and the respect of, value li- of, of human life and the value of that. That's not being taught. It's about me first, me first. I want to win. I showed up. Give me something. And with that attitude, how can you how can you have a successful family or even a successful business or a successful school or i mean anything in our country is just going to fall apart because when you take the family values out of it there's absolutely no values it's all about me and me first well yeah it it's called pure secularism um no rules regulations guidelines parameters nothing uh it's just all about you know the entire world revolves around me um and so everything is for my benefit it has nothing to do with treating my fellow man with respect valuing human life uh all those things go out the window with secularism and you know liberalism left unchecked uh, that's exactly what you end up with. I, I mean, this this should not be a surprise that we find ourselves uh, in the current state. We, we just a matter. We got here off uh, awfully quick. Exactly, and I don't know if you know this. I have I have some friends that uh, are from Florida, actually hunting buddies, and they message me on Facebook. And every day, I don't know if, you, if you've said anything about this. I, I kind of caught you after it was after three. Um, Florida legislation passed a bill last night, last night in, 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 the, in the cloak of darkness, 
that you now have to be 21 years of age to buy a rifle in the state of Florida. Well, I no, I didn't hear that, but I did hear that uh, uh, here, uh, I mean, nationally, uh, they are now floating in D.C. that anyone that purchases a semi-automatic, which is anything but a single shot, I guess, um, that uh, you would have to be 21 years old. I mean, lots of things are being floated around, but and the anti-gun people are trying to do it in the heat of the debate while the emotion is still fresh. Um, exactly. But that's, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, as time goes on, we'll come back to our senses. Well, and here's the problem with that. I joined the United States Army when I was 17 years old. I went to boot camp the summer before my senior year in high school. There's a program the Army had called a split option. I was in boot camp with 20 and 30 year old men handling the M16A1s, shooting AT4s, setting off Claymore mines, throwing grenades, and learning basic combat skills at 17 years of age. Now, how is it that at 17 years of age, still in high school, I go back and finish my senior year like three days after I got out of boot camp. Now, how is it that a 17-year-old can go to the, join the military, learn how to defend and possibly die for his country, and now they're saying you have to be 21 years old to buy a, a, a firearm that doesn't compare to what the military uses? Well, it, it's simple. Uh, the same uh, uber-liberal mentality that doesn't want, uh, you know, gun ownership anywhere. Uh, they would prefer we just outlaw guns uh, completely. Those are the same people that ha- that see no value in uh, in our military forces. You know, they're, uh, they'll go to bed at night and sleep uh, restful with their head on the pillow while somebody else defends their freedom. They just don't want to be a part of it. Exactly, exactly. And they have no problem hiring people to guard their house and their family with guns. Exactly. But I I think you're doing a great job. I just want to encourage everybody, find out who your congressman is in your district. Call them and tell them what you think. I called uh, Congressman Michael Burgess before I called your show and and left my opinion uh, about the Second Amendment. And uh, everybody needs to do that. Let your congressman know where you stand. That's the best way to get it started. Because then they'll understand if they don't follow what the people the representing are saying, they're probably going to be out on their ear. But I think you're doing a great job. Let's get prayer back into school. Let's get God back into people's lives. And I think we're going to see a huge change in this country. Well, if uh, I, you know, I truly believe we're going to replay for you. Um, it's a link on Facebook. We're going to replay for you. Uh, and I think uh, Grant was the one that said we're at a juncture. We're either going to go one way or the other. I truly believe we are at that, uh, you know, um, that fork in the road to coin a phrase. And we're either going to save this country or it's going to dissolve into nothingness, as many societies have, uh, that are a little over 200 years old. I mean, that's uh, that's what it is. That's, that's what it is. Um, and it's up to us what we do with it. All right. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. We'll check your afternoon drive. It's been a mess out there, especially on 35. Try to get you around the hot spot safe and sound. And um, we'll replay, David, that that, uh, link on the Facebook. All right, we'll do that next on News Talk 820 WBAP. D2, News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, four minutes after the hour. I, I, you know, I'm, as a matter of fact, my program director, uh, Kevin Graham, uh, he's program d- director for WBAP and KLIF, our sister station. He said, "What? What? Uh, what happened here? What was it? A call? Was it?" I said, "Man, I don't know. It just hit me. 
It just hit me and a rant came out. You know, I'm sick and tired of being told what we can and can't do by a bunch of politically correct. We need liberals that get all the attention from the uber liberal media and the people that have the right idea are somehow pushed to the peripheral. Yeah, we need God and prayer back in schools. We need God and prayer. It was this country, whether you like it, whether you don't, well, I'm not sure I agree. Doesn't matter. The country was founded on the principles of the Bible, and since the removal of God and prayers from schools, we've got a whole world of unwanted changes that have taken place. Violence has risen to to horrific levels. In general, morals, values have been devalued. They don't mean anything. Most most kids, if you look at them and talk about morals and values, you get this deer-in-the-headlight look. What are you talking about? Drug use, drug sales have increased dramatically in the public schools. The use of profanity. Have you ever been to a mall on a Saturday afternoon? The use of profanity by kids, by kids, and yes, some faculty members, has become the accepted language. Has become the accepted language. Bullying, how many conversations do you want to have about that? Bullying has become part of the landscape, and to make matters, to make matters seem all the more saddening, most kids have little or no understanding whatsoever of what it means to respect their elders. Remember that? Oh, Rick, wait a minute. Are you talking about the 1800s with cowboys and Indians? No, I'm talking about respecting elders, respecting yourself, respecting other people you're around. No concept of that anymore. Prior to the removal of God and prayer from the public schools, our kids had, they had environments, they had learning environments that were valued and appreciated by both the kids and the parents alike. And respect levels, respect, look it up, it's a good, very good word. Respect levels were entirely different than they are today not even in the same stratosphere. Today, our kids need us. They need us to be a voice for what is right for them, not as what not what's politically correct for one or two people with their nose out of joint or a bunch of uh, do-nothing legislators, non-representing representatives in D.C. Every attempt has fallen on deaf ears. I went to change.org petition to put God back in schools. 49 people. Same website, change.org. Ban NRA TV from Amazon streaming. Thousands of re- Okay. Uh, David, tell people how they can make their voice uh, known on that, if you would. I promised I would do it. I've been promising. I I just, I realize you can't listen to the old three hour show. Um, But, you know, you can go to the podcast anytime, WBAP.com. If you want to make your voice heard, uh, tell them how to do that, David. Okay. If you make your voice heard, go to Facebook, type in WBAP. And you go halfway down the page, and that is where that link is posted. And what you need to do is go ahead and either make a post on it, or what we would prefer you to do is to share it. There you go. There you go. And uh, you can go to the Twitter account as well. Uh, Let's go to George in Little Elm. George, thank you for waiting. Thank you, Brother Rick. Good to talk to you. Hey, you know, it, there, there are just so many things running through my head. I'm so glad you said the other day that you don't have a cheek to turn anymore because, man, I don't. Man, listen, <laughs> the, guy, the, the guy telling you that we should go to the bathroom to pray, you know, we we as Christians have have not known where we were going, right, like Thomas in, 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 in John four sixteen when Jesus said, you know, I am the truth, I am the way, no one gets to the Father except through me. You know, we've lit, we were, I was taught as a Christian, as 
Christian, you know, to to live and let live as long as people didn't didn't trample on me. I was never told to let people trample over me and be afraid to speak my mind. Our kids are like Thomas in that book. They don't know where they're going and they don't know how to get there. And if we don't provide them a way by putting God and prayer back in 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 school, they have no idea where they're going, as no one does. If you don't have faith and respect and belief in something. You have nowhere to go, and that's what the government wants. They don't want people to have any other place to go except for them for a welfare check or whatever. And I am absolutely sick of the Muslims demanding they have prayer mats for their for their ide- political ideology it's not even a religion it's it's a false doctrine a false prophet a false everything and we let them bully us around and the government is afraid of them but they're not afraid of the christians and i'll hang up now and let you go but i'm absolutely sick of it i love your brother thank you for everything we're doing uh, i uh, couldn't agree more you know i i per- my personal belief that uh, islam is a false doctrine that's my personal belief i'm not telling you what to believe i believe it's an ideology that uh, people are kept in through fear and intimidation but that's you know i'm sick and tired of the federal government the schools and everybody else you know they they break their backs bending over to, to accommodate everybody but christians when the country was founded on biblical principles whether you like it or not they were it was uh mark in arlington mark thanks for waiting how you doing mark i'm doing good rick First thing I want to say, dude, don't despair. Don't lose hope. We're actually everywhere out here. Got that? <laughs> no, if if I'd lost hope, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, you know, maybe uh, maybe I'm too much of a an internal optimist. I think anything can be done if another if enough people get involved. Rick, do you know what it's like when you go out? Oh, this is a phrase that I'm not going to stand for, but to the flyover regions. Yeah. It's not the East Coast. It's not the West Coast. It's a flyover. Oh, let's see. Uh, in the airport in uh, Atlanta, the busiest? Uh, I, Chicago, think it, I think Atlanta, Chicago. Um, Chicago and yeah. Dallas. Yeah. And I think in that order. We are not flyovers. You get out into the smaller count, the smaller towns. <clears throat> you get out into the rural areas. People have their guns. People have their Bibles. And, man, the churches are packed. And you see T-shirts with slogans on them that you would never see in Dallas. Well, that's true. You're right. One one thing I want to encourage all of your listeners, I made this mistake. I thought that Islam was just another benevolent religion. And let me say, I want to encourage all of us, to get out there and study what that garbage is. It's the teachings of a false prophet. Muhammad never said there was anything wrong with murder. It's all on who you murder. No, you, you need to, I encourage people to read the Quran, which I've read, uh, and the Hadith, which is one of the companion books. It'll scare, scare the daylights out of you. That's going to do it for me. Stick around. Mark Levin, he's next. Go to... Uh, Go to Facebook, WBAP. Go about halfway down the page. You'll see hashtag God and Prayer back in school. Share it if you would. Uh, That's the only way we're going to make a difference if enough people rise up. And I know we can do it. I'm Rick Roberts. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether we agree or not. I'll be back tomorrow at 2 on News Talk, 820 WBAP.